Welcome to the Phillips Virtual Hymns Learning Zone. I'm delighted to introduce our presentation, how Phillips is making sure their medical devices are safe, effective, and secure by applying regulatory and industry best security controls. And please join me in welcoming our speaker for this session, Michael McNeil. Michael is the Global Product Security and Services Officer for Royal Phillips. Michael? Thank you very much. One of the key things that, that we just want to make sure we emphasize in this particular session is how we can take a look at making sure that medical devices are safe, effective, and secure. And this needs to be aligned with applying appropriate regulatory and industry best practices and making sure that those security controls are leveraged from the beginning of your processes through the life cycle and maintenance of your solutions that you're offering. In many cases, when we look at solutions, we want to start from the very beginning. And when you have security by design, you really want to make sure you understand all of the key dynamics of deploying a product and starting out with the security and the design in your processes. So here at Philips, one of the key elements that we do is to leverage and look at providing a security and services framework. That framework is mapped to a number of industry standards as well as best practices. Phillips specifically presents and aligns with a number of different industry organizations, such as the Privacy and Security Committee at HIMSS. In addition to that, we also participate very actively with the Health Sector Coordinating Council and making sure that we can have alignment on what those appropriate framework areas are. The other key element that is a critical path here is around how do you do appropriate patching and updates and having a security patch management program that's core to your foundation because vulnerabilities will always be defined and identified over the course of time, but it's based upon how you're able to execute against those particular elements. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you have a good understanding and conducting a risk assessment. That risk assessment could have elements of how the product is currently dimensioned, which types of areas is your product and solutions being offered. So you want to understand from an architecture perspective the entire ecosystem that that product or solution is being, being deployed. And that's where you conduct a risk assessment. And that risk assessment takes into a number of different threat vectors and different avenues where some compromises could take place within your product or solution. But it is incorporated to have that particular element. Testing being static and dynamic testing is also a very critical element that is a, is a key component when you're doing a risk assessment as well. You clearly wanna understand the threat vector and environments around you know, potential malware, and cybersecurity attacks that could take place in the environment. And that's why it's also very critical to make sure that you have that understanding. So once you now understand the security by design, you then want to be able to move into what are the key elements of the program? And you want to make sure that there's an alignment around continuous improvement. So if you do have threats and vulnerabilities that are a part of how you are introducing solutions and maintaining them, you want to make sure you're filtering in that particular data and information and making it a continuous loop to feed your processes around your threat intelligence, your testing, and making sure that those elements come into play. You then want to make sure that you have a strong focus operationally and looking at third parties because a number of different um, medical device manufacturers and other organizations that bring products and solutions to the market they're built upon other types of components. Some of those components could be open source types of, of components. Others as well could be components that are proprietary that you're making within the development of your solutions. But all in all, you wanna make sure that the ingredients that you're building into your products and solutions, that you also have a very good capabilities and understanding how they are executed as well. And so that's why it is very critical to understand what you have in terms of regulatory requirements and the different geographies 
the customer focus piece, and then also, again, aligned with the third party in the attestation. Again, when I talk about a customer, customers have different needs, they have different deployment schedules, and when you're developing your solutions and your program, those all need to be taken into account with that customer as well as the regulatory environment. That all leads from your programming into your transparency. And their transparency now is to make sure that those risk assessments that have been performed and then also any types of security has been documented and made available to the customers. As a part of their procurement process, we offer the MDS2 documentation. It also combines with the solution set of a software bill of materials. And that both of these elements combined give you the capability and the flexibility as a customer and from a transparency perspective to know what's in the solutions you have so that when you do have appropriate vulnerabilities, you're in a position to really be able to react to them and work with the medical device manufacturer on those particular areas of focus. And then finally, when you look at that transparency, you wanna make sure you can document and understand through a coordinated vulnerability disclosure process, we identified some of these vulnerabilities, we've put appropriate compensating controls or remediation of those vulnerabilities, you've communicated that not only to affected customers, but to appropriate regulatory and other bodies so that you're sharing that information effectively across the medical device ecosystem. And so when you combine all of these elements, these are the critical pieces that we take a look at from the design of a solution through the actual maintenance and program of that solution, and then making sure that information has been provided from a transparency perspective. And all of these steps are extremely critical as you move forward and through the process. So when you drill down a little bit more on that execution and, and design, what we really wanna find is that we're a regulated organization and entity. The FDA is a critical element of that, and we perform these key activities under our quality management system. Some of the call outs for them, again, is having a appropriate cybersecurity plan. That cybersecurity plan not only identifies for the product itself, but the environment, the architecture, and how it should be deployed and how it needs to be maintained. That element is critical when we look at our design and our submissions to the FDA. You also have, again, the product security risk management plan. So if you do have current sets of, of um, vulnerabilities or activities or you need to put in appropriate compensating controls to be able to mitigate the environment that a solution is in so that it is much more protected, you will find those elements within your product security risk management plan. We also, during that testing period, do secure code analysis and provide the status updates and documentation on that. So you want to have a static-based look and, and feel for your code analysis, as well as doing vulnerability scans, which is some of your penetration testing and your threat modeling elements, which would come into to design here. And then once again, you then want to be able to understand what are those key components? And that's where the software bill of materials and the manufacturer's disclosure statement comes into play. And from a very important point, to make sure that that information is available you know, from the start within procurement for your health delivery organizations, as well as any constituents that then need to maintain the products and solutions while they are in the marketplace. And all of this clearly aligns to a framework, which is the international standards around 62304. And we align a number of these elements specifically on that. Um, what we'd like to do as well right now is to make an overall announcement. Um, just recently in December, the Underwriters Lab had launched their new security option and a program to align firms to be IEC 62304. And we're here and glad to, to communicate that Philips is the first medical device manufacturer to execute this new option. This new option helps demonstrate 
that our internal testing and processes that we use to develop our solutions is tightly coupled and aligned and shows the robustness of our controls and that it aligns to the UL 2900-2-1, which is your software cybersecurity as a medical device and the controls that they align to. So we're very excited about this particular announcement and our ability to demonstrate a continuous security by design improvement and the confidence of our program. And um, it is very critical that we do have this in place. Again, in alignment with this announcement and being a registered mark within UL, um, this all ties to the fact that the Phillips Security Center of Excellence, which is the core of our hub and the management that does the testing of all medical devices, has been certified once again by the Underwriters Laboratory UL. What that gives you the most, most insurance on is the fact that it's laboratory quality management systems was tested. Our security risk management processes that I just described was also tested and validated and audited, as well as our software security verification planning, how we do change management and continuous improvement, and our overall verification of security risk control measures. So when you wrap all of these elements together, from a design perspective, Philips has been able to take that next step, not only for just some of our products, but more importantly, across all of the processes that we execute in the development and design of our solutions. And as a part of our submissions to the FDA to have that extra emphasis around security and the controls that we put in place for the execution of our products. Um, once again, when you look at the overall elements of what our center of excellence does, they are the ones that are doing, you know, known vulnerability testing, assessing malware testing, looking at input testing, penetration, understanding where there might be weaknesses in the code, providing static and, and other, um, you know, byte code analysis to assure that those elements are being um, tested. Fuzz testing was another key element that um, has to be recognized when you're doing those processes. And all of this helps to improve that overall confidence. And that's what we're, again, really excited about and really looking forward to making sure that as we deploy overall products and solutions in the marketplace, that it has that extra positioning around the confidence that the customers and that the overall patients and users of solutions would be able to adhere to. So with that, I really appreciate the opportunity to take some time today and discuss these next steps and how Philips has aligned from an organization perspective with the industry, with our overall ecosystem in order to provide more safe and secure products in the marketplace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And to see more Philips Virtual Hymns Learning Zone presentations, please visit the Philips at Hymns 2020 homepage.